my coaching journey kind of started way back, like in high school, I could say. You know what I mean? You know how like when you play, okay, so I played football. Um well I actually played three sports in, in high school. I was a triathlete. But kind of football was like my main thing. But um when it came down to it, like just training and preparing for not only football, but just being able to transition from football to basketball and then from basketball to track. Like you you have to train and use your body in different ways. Like I call it movement training, skills training. So mm-hmm. um just having to do that so repeatedly, like over my high school career, I just kind of just grew a love for it. And then, you know, kind of just let me on. I went on to play uh, football at, at Georgia State. And then from there, it just kind of like, I always kind of knew I had to kind of coach in, in, in the back of me. Like, even when I was on the field, like, my teammates looked at me as kind of like a coach on the field. So it just kind of came natural to me. And then once once I graduated from uh, college, you know what I mean, and just kind of getting the feel for life, mm. it's more so you tend to always get back to your passion and kind of what you love. And it is, for me, my passion is just giving back, but I know so much about training and just like sports in general. So just being able to actually give back what I learned growing up and everything I have learned from training and playing a different sport, just being able to give back to to the youth in, in I guess, my own form of fashion. I guess mm-hmm. that's kind of why, I, that's why I created um, my business. That's kind of what, Help me grow my business is just me being genuine and kind of giving what I love to give and, and that just knowledge about training and different sports most so. Nice. So so tell us a little bit, what does your business specialize in? I've been specialized in skills and movement training for um a variety of sports. Right now lately I've just been I've been mainly working with football players and lacrosse players, but it's more so I just want to say, yeah. Uh, all around training for for athlete like development not only in like just footwork and agility but also hand eye coordination and strength and as well so it's just about training the overall athlete also mm-hmm. you know offering mentorships and so they can also tap into the mental um aspect as well but my uh as far as training wise well, specialize in skills and movement training you know and um I like guess yeah, more so sports performance. Yep. Nice. Who's uh? What sports your favorite to uh to train? Um, if I had to say, I I like football, but mm-hmm. learning the game of lacrosse and kind of actually having a, a few friends that play lacrosse and kind of just learning it. Yeah. Training lacrosse players is kind of almost the same as training the football players. It's just, you know, it's just a different sport, but the same type of movements, if I'm, if I'm making sense. So, yeah. it's football because I played it, mm-hmm. and lacrosse is kind of red there because I didn't get to play it, so I'm excited to – I've been excited to learn about it and kind of mm-hmm. just continue to learn about it. So, mm-hmm. it kind of keeps me on edge, and it helps me kind of stay engaged with my players and train them in a way that I know can be beneficial to them. Nice. So question for you. So what's the difference between skills and and the movement side? So, so for the... me, for me, I, I think skills is the basic, you know, your footwork and, mm-hmm. and all that, that what that, what that entails. As far as movement, it more so goes more specific to the sport that you play. Like, because mm-hmm. let's just be honest, you want to train the movement that the athlete is going to be doing repeatedely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's just say, and I just, everybody got their own like, definition of skills. Most, like I said, most of my skills is just basic footwork and just kind of knowing how to move as an athlete. Yeah. Movement training is going more so sports specific and more advanced movement to train yeah. your body to be able to, Okay, they say my lacrosse players, knowing they have to cut and move on, right? just doing kind of exercises and training just to where they can put power on their leg repeatedly, mm-hmm. repeatedly, and kind of don't 
don't wear down over time. It's mm. their body kind of build the strength up for those specific movements uh, over time. So that's kind of how I kind of explain the difference to them. But you no, know, everybody has their own definition. Mm. So when when parents bring athletes to you, what is a very common problem they're having? Why why do so, they seek your help? So when most parents come to me, nine times out of ten, the the athlete kind of is still growing into the, the I guess their the natural figure. So they not necessarily don't hit their growth spurt mm-hmm. when they're on the verge of hitting their growth spurt. So they kind of, you know how that when, you, when you're young, your body changes so fast. So you kind of, yeah. oh, how do I do this? And you kind of, oh, I can't, I don't know how to move this, but I'm just learn how to really move with your body. So I kind of target that area of kids mm-hmm. for that. So, not only uh, uh, is your body growing, but the mental capacity and the work that you can put your body through, that's kind of what I kind of get parents to see mm-hmm. when they come into the program. And that's kind of why parents seek me out because, like, I start from the basic. I like, just kind of help the athlete get to know their body first with yeah. basic training like that. And then the the more the athlete grow, you know, the more the training, I mean, the I guess, level of the training shit intense and the, the depth of the training shit intense because you always want a player to get better each and every year. Mm-hmm. Nice. So tell us a little bit about how you got your first client. So it's it's kind of crazy because I used to always, um, one of my good friends is a, a quarter a quarterback coach, which is a passing game coordinator at the high school well. And he used to just go out and throw with his quarterbacks in the well. So mm-hmm. you know, I would just go out there and just be with him. And then eventually athletes started to come, like skilled players started to come. And that kind of just took it kind of just took over me. Hey, y'all, you know, come, come, let's let's let us get some work working and let, let us train a little bit. And then kind of just growing from there, like just kind of doing it for free. Um every weekend they would the quarterback would go throw. I just getting a look, whoever athlete would come out, skill player would come out, mm-hmm. hey, just come, just come and train. And then eventually a parent kind of find hip hip to what I was doing, and just more so. Hey, my kid, can we kind of do this mm. an extra time or two in the week or something like that? And it's more so just started. That's kind of when I made it into a service when a parent asked, "Oh, hey, can I get my kid extra of this?" This now when the mother is just naturally doing it because you know they're there. That would kind of lead me to actually okay. Then it, just making it a side hustle. But now, like, um, having business for, like, a year or two and kind of just seeing how it's kind of just taking me more over and over and more so my ultimate goal is just ultimately just to become a full-time uh, sports performer coach. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just kind of learning everything now and just growing over the last year or two as well as, you know, jumping in the program and kind of mm-hmm. learning um, the things that are being taught in the program as well. Nice, nice. So, tell tell coaches watching uh, watching this this um this video, what's what is the importance of offering free sessions to to players and parents? Because a lot of coaches don't want to do that because they they feel like it's a, sometimes it's a waste of time. But how important was it for you to get get yourself out there? So, I mean, it really. Okay, so you know how I said I was antisocial and I'm not really kind of like a people, so I'm actually shy. So for me, I don't believe just, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for me though, it was just about giving back. Like like um, in order to kind of receive things, like you know how they say they give in order to receive. So it's kind of like that for me. Kind of just thinking of it like that. Okay, I got to to give mm-hmm. a certain bit of of my knowledge and what I know. Just so people can, you know, parents and kids be like, oh, coach, you actually just taught me something. And then once the person learns something for a second time, that's when they come back. And that's when you kind of just level up and build up and that. But offering free sessions, I would recommend it, like, on the regular. That way, because who doesn't like free things? You know what I mean? Yeah. But not not only is it just about getting it for free, but it's about if it's something you love to do, which is obviously coaching is what I love to do. I do it free any day, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's just thinking about it like that. Like I got in it because I love to do it, 
you know, I do it for free. Like it's just so happening that you can turn it into a business. So mm-hmm. now it's more so of just learning the business aspect of it and just growing that way. Yeah, like that. So, so tell us a little bit about your challenges. So what challenges have you, you faced so far since having your business? So my biggest thing is, I guess, marketing and, I guess, catching up in today's world as far as with social media and being able to, I guess, provide content and also sell yourself on social media. Mm-hmm. Um I've never been a big social media person. Not that just me. So I guess now, and I guess not never really knowing how to market. Yeah. That's I mean, it's still kind of I can admit it's still something that I'm Oscar that I'm trying to get over now. Um, more so because it kind of also kind of deal with my shy side. It's more so just like when I say learning the business part. It's okay. How do I market this as a business and kind mm. of grow to where people are? Oh, I want to pay him for his services. So it's more so my main obstacle is just marketing and actually getting engaged with social media to represent myself as a business. Mm. Like that. So you've you've been part of the Sports Accelerator program for a while now. Mm. Uh, talk to us. Well, talk to the coaches watching a little bit about the program and how how it's helped you. So, for the main, it I kind of feel like I came in at the right time because, mm-hmm. like, I literally started training literally like a, a year, two years, two three years ago. Yeah. So, where when I started kind of training and stuff like that, it more so naturally I didn't like kind of oh a parent not paying a parent this paying this thing so because i'm more so of a structure type person so with with me at first i didn't know i could turn this to a business so once i figured that out it's like okay how can i turn it to a business but know exactly what i'm doing and kind of move in the right way to turn it into a, a legit profiting business and you know just out research and looking around and just constantly kept coming across videos of make money coaching sports so mm. eventually i was like ah, let me just tap into this program and, and you know you got to take risks and that's why i tell people like if it's something that you really want to chase it's something you really want to do yeah. just take risk and and it's i could say it's a good risk now but it's a risk that i took to invest in this program to be like okay I need something to actually teach me how to engage with parents, how to make sure I'm, I'm going about it the right way to where it don't fall back on me or, or mm-hmm. you know, certain situations. So mm-hmm. it more so gave me structure. And then it, like I said, it's still to this day, it's teaching me how to, I guess, continue to grow market and continue to scale and grow my business. If you were to pick one area of the program, what 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 is the best one? Or that's that's helped you the most. Um, since I'm an observer, and I like to sit back and just listen to people conversate and talk. The um the sports community, like this being um the set of, being a, being able to see other coaches go in and put their questions up and kind of see what they're going through. I literally I don't say much. But I'm in the back of the classroom, you know, scrolling and kind of reading questions and reading people respond. And because that engages my mind and not more so physically engaging, but just observing and seeing what goes on. So I guess that's my favorite part about it, just being able to see like-minded coaches Mm -hmm. ask questions and kind of see how they respond and kind of give each other feedback and things like that. So talk to us a little bit about your your onboarding process so when when you get new clients how how do they they come in or where are they coming in how how do you get them into the program what's the process so for me like i said it go back to the free thing like um and most of mine been word of mouth because like mm-hmm. i said um I, i'm just doing it part-time to grow it uh full-time so right now it's just more so mine been word of mouth and with being word of mouth I kind of actually kind of come in more physical contact with with the lead. So it's more so about, okay, hey, I'm going to give you a general explanation of my program and how it works. Because mm-hmm. nine times 10, 
I'd be for time crunch because I'm more so having a session to go to. So I kind of get them engaged real quick. Then I'll be like, hey, are you free within the next day or two? Mm-hmm. Can can we hop on a, a quick call? Like I, I gave you a, a basic rundown of, of what's going on. But on the call, I can kind of take the time to answer questions like that right there. And then mm-hmm. most parents kind of take me up on it, give me the information. And then on that call, I kind of just follow up what I talked about with them previously and just keep them engaged to let in, in from there mm-hmm. it's more so hey come out for a free evaluation session like you, we met uh, from a previous like whether it's a referral we got on the phone after we get on the phone I'm more so hey let's go do a free session mm-hmm. whether it's I try to typically do it within that same week yeah. so when they come out hey you know after that session Hey, we got we we talked on the phone. Where I kind of explained the program. And then we got you out for a free trial session. Okay, from from here, I kind of put them on the time crunch a little bit. Yeah. Hey, can can we hop on a call at that point, twenty four hours from now, to set up if see if you really want? Because you got to give them time to go through, go back home. Or, hey, is this a program we really? Want? How how do you like to train? Let them engage with their athlete, in there. Yeah. and then from there it's kind of more so. Hey, do you guys want to move forward, or what way can I possibly help you? Because I'm also in it, but if I can't help you with my program, is there another program I can refer you to? Like, are you the, so for me? Um, like I kind of get a lot of basic quarterbacks to come in. I'm not a quarterback. Uh, I don't know how to train quarterback. I never play quarterback. So, like, um, my closest friend, kind of like a bitch part, I refer a quarterbacks to him. Okay. So I kind of – and I guess that just generally me making physical contact uh, yeah. with the parents and being able to talk and see kind of what they're looking for. And then from there, you know, I still hop on the call with them, mm-hmm. but that's just to get them in my kind of email contact day at least. Yeah. Um but then I also still refer them out, and then that way, I, not only do I have them in my in my database, I also give a referral to to my friends' company as well. Nice. I like that you've mentioned the referral because I'm going to ask you a question about that. So, what's important about because this is something we teach coaches setting up referrals with other coaches, but how mm-hmm. important is that process? Um, it's important. Now, when I put it at, at the top of the importance, yes and nay, because, you know, you still have to focus on yourself and kind of get your stuff done. But being able to work and partner with uh, and refer with other coaches, it's amazing because at the end of the day, we all doing the same thing. We all kind of have the same passion of getting athletes better. So yeah. whether you whether you train them or I train them, Regardless, they just put this athlete in the best position to get mm-hmm. better. So whether they want to train with you or train with me, they just work it like that. And that's kind of how I went about it. And that's kind of how, if I ever kind of – every coach that – and it only been like a, a handful of them that I kind of work with as far as referral point, that's kind of how we kind of go about it and talk about it. Like, hey, man, this your strength as far as your, you know, your, your training and how you go about things. If I get an athlete that's looking just for that, then I'm going to send them your way because, you know, I don't want to cheat them. And if you get an athlete that, you know, hey, they they need more of a, this type of skill training, you send them my way. So it's kind of like collabing at the same time, yeah. but knowing and kind of, I guess, expression, oh, you're a better trainer and you athletes kind of more hip to you with this type of training yeah. than, you, than my style type of training. And then, you know, vice versa, just knowing that, Everybody at the end of the day, we offer the same training, which is skills, movement, whatever, whatever training sport you might be training. But at the end of the day, we offer in ourselves, and that's what the biggest that's the biggest thing. And once a parent know that, okay, hey, I, I see you genuinely care about my athlete getting better. So whoever I refer them to, they're gonna automatically in the back of their mind think, hey, uh, you got to be as just as genuine as training because. You know, you only associate with like with like people. So that's why I kind of like the referral program, and I kind of tell people if you think about it that way, it'll make referral to other coaches and coaches referring you a whole lot easier mm-hmm. because you know we all in this together. Yeah, I I really like that because you you reiterate the 
the importance of special being a specialist at a certain thing. There's a lot of coaches that want to be specialists in everything, and mm -hmm. they just want to bring in players just to get clients. But then they end up getting bad clients because they're not good at what that child actually needs. Mm -hmm. So it's really good that that collaboration you have. So Dion, tell us a little bit about uh, the sports training industry. Where do you see it going? Uh, what are the late? What, where do you see the trends, technology, advances? How do you see it going in the next five years? Um, I still think it, it's going to be uh, a good industry because, like I said, sports are forever. Sports is what make make countries, and, and, and that's what make the world kind of – it gives you something to live for. Sports is just a common ground for everybody just to come along and kind of play. So I feel like – the sports training industry is – I don't think it's reached its limit yet because, you know, kid, for, kids are forever getting in sports now. And mm -hmm. just uh, the competition and the level that sports have been playing that I feel like if you don't have a, a sports trainer or your team is not working with a sports performance trainer or, or a specific sports uh, coach, then, you know, that's where you kind of going to start to see a difference. And then, you know, it's just going to forever aid our, our industry. Now, as far as technology and stuff, wise like that, it more so, I don't think it's going to butt heads with it because, like I said, I feel like as a trainer and as a coach, it's about the relationship you build with the client. And I don't think technology or a robot could build a relationship with an actual client. So I feel like that will always uh, have sports trainers have the upper hand. So for me, I just think positive and, and know that within the next five years, the sports industry, the sports training and I guess sports coaching industry is just going to continue to go up. To go up. Now, what about your personal goals and, and aspirations in the next five years? Where do you want your business to be? So... First, I mean, ultimate goal for me first is just become full time um mm. training, which I have. A, that's the goal set for myself mm. by the end of this year. And nice. kind of going into twenty twenty five, like to put myself in a position to where I can go full time training, and then from there, just grow and scale, and eventually within the next five years to be able to open and start opening a little facility to where I kind of have a the indoor training facility and kind of grow from there nice but fantastic so for you for some for you and someone watching that wants to go full-time what does that look like for you what do you need to achieve because it's a simple answer right clients but mm -hmm. there's more to it than just that there's there's systems and stuff but for you what does it what what does it entail so so for me it goes back to exactly what you just said. Like you can say you want to do it, but you know you actually have to put system and things in in the play. I guess to speak for myself, for me to actually go full time, um, I have to rely and learn marketing and social media because I naturally and kind of this how I've just been growing my business lately is just word of mouth, like really just being out there getting word of mouth and from there it's just more so knowing that if i can learn social media learn how to market and actually come up with a strategic plan and kind of i guess in, in crazy um being kind of actually sent out the email kind of was it last week or the week before last about the um, investing 200 into 200 dollars into marketing and knowing that if you sign a client you you know you still making a profit us so yeah. it's just more so taking that simple email that I read and kind of okay how can I build a structure knowing that okay I have to actually invest in into marketing and actually invest into you know the social media platform so it's kind of about me from this learning that and just reading that email it's like okay how can I learn that and put it into a, like a system or a structure that to where I can then challenge myself to become disciplined to do it just as such and time to, and basically just stay true to the system and just let the system work itself out and eventually it, it'll show that okay 
I can go full time now because you know I got a, I got enough clients to to sustain, mm-hmm. but then I also know how to continue to bring clients in because that's the ultimate goal. I yeah, you can sign clients, but it's about keeping clients in your program and then bringing new clients, continue to bring new clients in. So that's the biggest thing. Nice, love that. Perfect. Right, Dion. So if anyone watching wants to connect with you or follow you, how can they they do that? So if you want to connect with me, you can follow me on um, Instagram, Facebook, at Credo Sports Performance. Um, if you're trying to get in contact with me, visit my website at credosportsperformance.com. And um, you just send a link, I mean, uh, uh, contact us, and I'll, I'll reach out. Um, always willing to reach out with you. Your coach mm-hmm. or an athlete or a parent, I'm always open to talk. Um, just feel free to reach out to me and just know that um, it's just a deep passion that I have and just just lead me throughout. Nice, perfect. All right, well, Dion, thanks again for jumping on. Um, my goal with you is hopefully in in a year's time we jump on again and you can share your story how you how you now went full time uh, with your mm-hmm. business. Oh yeah, I'll be when when it comes true, I'll be glad to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for jumping on and uh we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, we're great.